Hey everybody, welcome back to Brown Thumb Nursery. I am Rob and I'm out here in the greenhouse and uh, seed starting some uh, some seeds. <laughs> and I got peppers today. I Last uh, last week I potted up, man, I had 25 different varieties of hot peppers and I didn't, I ended up with four 10, 20 trays of them and that's, I stopped there. So I didn't, I don't know how many I got uh, to finish out those and, and then I've got the regular sweet peppers Deb likes all the like the bell peppers banana peppers all the sweet ones and and uh, Anyhow, so I've got I'm just gonna get right on it, right? First thing I've got is What everybody on I keep hearing call that a pepperoncini, but Deb always called them pepperoncini So I'm gonna call that a pepperoncini <laughs> So I don't know. It just seems weird. You know how when you hear people talk and they uh, tell, use different words that is like like uh, I love hearing people say uh, we we always grew marigolds, but th everybody on uh, we hear that we watch uh, they call them marigolds, marigolds. I'm like marigolds, that's cute. I love that. So now we call them marigolds, kind of just like a poking fun kind of thing, but marigolds, that's cute. But anyhow, pepperoncini or pepperoncini. Anyhow, <laughs> Deb loves these things. She. Uh, always like when she gets her pizza she'll she knows i don't like them so she'll always ask for them on the side they'll give her a little cup of them she just eat those things so i think she might have uh when we grew them last year i think she might have canned up some or pickled them or whatever she you know her process is for doing that so anyhow i've got these egg egg cartons that i uh use and i cut them so they, you know, they, normally they're, these ones are an 18, well, this one's missing one. I must have needed a, a little for something. Anyhow, so what I did is I cut cut the end off, end off of it so that uh, that amount, those 15 now, will fit in one of my uh, 10, 20, let me show you. Okay, so you can, well, let me just turn, turn you down there. So you can see, whoops. So you can see now I can get one, two, I can get three of these plus another row at the end if i wanted to of these in this 1020 tray and that way once they sprout up i can start bottom watering them and use that so so there's that and i'm going to go ahead and put these i'm going to label i got a label made for each kind of seed i'm going to put the label right there with that and i'm just going to do one one of these 15 packs and then i'll save the rest of the seeds um but the reason I was only able to do four of these 1020 flats is because I've only got two uh, heat mats and I kind of got carried away. I shouldn't have done all four. I ended up borrowing Deb's, um, her heat mat or heat, whatever she calls it, for heating pad for she to sit on or put it on her back or whatever. So I borrowed that, but it didn't work because I think it shuts off after a few hours or something for safeties or something. But so that one that whole tray um is barely not even i think i might have like one seed sprouting in that that tray so so that idea didn't work probably only because of that safety feature um but uh so yeah i need to get some more um heat mats i've got them the, basically the size of one tray and what I need to do is order me that big one from Haas Tools. Um, I can that way I could fit on my whole shelf because I've got this kind of shelving, you know, like this in here. I got racks of that inside, um, so I can if I get that mat, the big old thing, I can hit put five, I think. Um, oops, Let's just see there, get five of them in. I'll just leave it in there. I have two of them in that. Thing. because we need to start tomatoes we got plenty of but lots of other things that we got to start so all right let's see what we got next here got the tabasco pepper for your good old tabasco sauce so i'll go ahead and make sure there yeah, stick that there Uh-oh, got two of them in that one too. Well, put that over here.
Now the nice thing about using these here, of course, I always poke a hole in the bottom. You see there's a, there's a hole poked in the bottom. Um, that way allows, allows the water to drain out if you water them too much. Or if you get to the point where they've sprouted good and you're bottom watering out of a, a bottom thing, um, they, you know, soaks that up. But, uh, but you got to make sure that you go ahead and pot these up into a larger size pot, whatever your next size, you can go with that size whatever size you know you're going to be potting them up i usually go from from directly from the egg crate to this now um that's not much different than your regular old six pack uh which this is you know, double six pack but um they're a little deeper these will last a lot longer um you can really um if you grow them out for six or eight weeks you can grow these from directly from these all the way to planting them in the garden if you time it right. But these here, almost always, I go ahead and um, I go ahead and pot them up. But I have to say that yesterday, Deb was out there taking them right out of my egg cartons and planted big old rows of uh, lettuces and what else did she plant? So I mean, it, sometimes it'll work out. You can go straight from your egg carton to planting them in the ground and uh but anyhow just something to think about don't let them get too overgrown in these and they'll start dying off and whatnot so i'm gonna go ahead and cut me off another another one here i'm using seed starting mix i always use seed starting mix for um let me show you down here i got in my uh under my potting bench i got potting soil and I got seed starting mix right here so I'll go ahead and get some seed starting mix and I always keep it moist always want to make sure it's getting moist just kind of put that in there across there just kind of smash it in a little bit I always like to make sure that there's plenty of uh, only I like to get it all the way up full and then just so I can see my my spaces in between. As long as I got those there, I can tell my tell where my stuff is, my different cell is. All right, I always like to get them watered in real good. Now my seed starting mix is already moist. Um, um, I don't let it, I usually try to not let it get dry if i'm out here watering plants i always spray a little bit of water in my uh in my seed starting mix in my potting soil just to keep it moist because i don't like to let it go uh, hydrophobic but the important thing on on these seeds as they're germinating is to make sure that that top surface stays moist they don't need to be moist from the bottom you don't need to bottom water them unless that's the only way you can keep them moist up to the top but that's going to cause some rot and different things like that so what you want to do is you want to keep that top level moist now you can do it different ways you can like if you have to work and all day and you won't be able to get you know check on them throughout the day and you just don't know put some saran wrap across the top or like i, I usually take those egg cartons if i'm doing them by themselves i'll stick them inside like a walmart plastic bag and just until they start to germinate so there's different ways to keep that humidity and moisture in there but uh, i have a little sprayer that i use inside on my uh, propagation rack with the heat mats the heat mats will help the heat will help dry them out so you want to add moisture at the top until they uh until they get germinated so that's that's a very important thing of course they still need water after that and then you can bottom water them or top water them however you choose whatever your your best method is for for whatever your situation is so anyhow let me grab another tray and i got hundreds more seeds to go all right next thing i got is a cayenne pepper um so i'm gonna go ahead and get those going um you know i might sell a few of these so i might end up doing a couple of these 15 packs now these are seeds that i've saved um and i found man i tell you what this this year especially i've noticed because i've i've literally planted seeds from the package you know the package that i planted the original seeds from that i planted in the garden so i planted some of those and then i planted right beside that 
another another 15 pack two other 15 packs of seeds that i saved from those very seeds that i had planted out of that package the ones that i saved did better now i don't know if that's because they're fresher because you know those other pack was you know a couple years old now or whatever but um i was pretty pleased that my my seeds i saved did that well i mean really well so anyhow try to get some seeds out here we got us a little big little pile of seeds there in my hand let's go ahead and put those in there Now you may be wondering, well, man, is it time to start seeds already? Well, down here it is. Um, in fact, I started seeds last, you know, well, started pepper seeds last week. Um, I've started other seeds before that um, in more cold weather uh, things that I've started, like the lettuces and bok choy and kale and different things like that. I already started. In fact, over here, I don't know if you can see, I got a big old that's all kale that's growing over there uh, red russian kale that i did i don't know several weeks ago i mean probably month month and a half and i put them right directly in the bed out there now those will get too hot in here so i need to pull them out and pot them up and sell them or or pot them in our uh you know raised beds or garden or something so anyhow but if you want to know when the best time to whoops to plant seeds in your area it really depends on what seeded seed it is if it's a cold hardy thing like kale you know get that started you can plant you can grow kale through the winter in most places um bok choy lettuces those are all cold hardy things so you can grow those way way earlier which is uh which is a good thing because it keeps you occupied throughout the winter I don't know if any of you get like cabin fever in the winter when when you can't grow stuff so that gives you some stuff to work on but like your peppers and tomatoes i usually start my peppers before my tomatoes because peppers take a little bit longer to germinate and grow um but about usually about six or eight weeks before your last frost now ours is really easy to remember because my son's birthday is on the day that they say is our average last frost date which is march 27th now if you're up in michigan or something it might be the middle of april you might be still getting freezes frosts and stuff so you just need to check your own uh your own zone you can just look up usda um hardiness zones and then type in your zip code or whatever you'll find you'll find like the Ar farmer's almanac or different there's there's literally hundreds of different calculators out there that will help you uh figure that oh you know what i got space for more add some more that way look how many seeds i still got left in my hand <laughs> You saw how many I had. It's like you can hardly tell the difference, right? So, pepper seeds. I mean, okay, take a look here. Pepper seeds uh, are easy to save. You don't have to like let them. You know, pepper seeds you can take and go. If you've got a ripe pepper, a good ripe pepper, you're getting ready to eat. You can save those seeds. The riper, the better, of course. Uh, but yeah, so save them pepper seeds i mean don't like go to this if you're buying them stuff from the store and it's a hybrid and you don't you know you're not going to get that same pepper generally it's going to be different but uh you'll uh, you'll get a pepper for sure so it might even be one that you like even better I, in fact i did that years ago i probably told this story to you guys many times and maybe we got some new viewers i bought a what was called a it was just marked as chili red but it was a hybrid and man i just i have a hard time not saving seeds if there's seeds i'm gonna find something and put them in and save them it's just i mean <laughs> it's a hard thing for me to not save seeds but anyhow so i planted those i planted those in fact i i already i planted those last year and they're um they're already growing but anyhow um so i planted those seeds 
the next year grew them out in inside and started them and planted them out in the garden this is back when we lived up in michigan man about it's probably close to 18 19 years ago now um but anyhow i planted those in the garden and the uh it was funny because there was four different varieties that grew out of that one one batch of seeds so that's really you know just kind of taught me something you know years ago um so what it, it grew a big long big long yellow banana pepper maybe some of you guys like those but that wasn't really what i was looking for so i never saved any of those seeds again but there was one of these seeds. there was a there was a banana pepper big banana pepper there was there's four different times i can't remember all the different types but the one that uh that i liked was a little red chili pepper which is kind of very similar to what the chili pepper was that i um that i had planted the year before and so i so that's the one i said and they were really good to eat now i like a chili pepper i mean not like a you know really 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 hot one but these are pretty hot i would say probably i've never had them tested but i would say anywhere from three to six thousand on the uh, scoville scale so but anyhow they're so they're pretty <laughs> you bite into them you knew you bit something so whoops uh so that so i saved those seeds from then on and every year after that every year after that and to this day i get that same variety um so now it's not an heirloom for me but it'll be my family will have those seeds as an heirloom so i don't know i know there's you know definitions for what an heirloom is as far as seeds that doesn't fit the bill as an heirloom seed but in my family those will be handed down because that's that's it was a special thing to me and so got some moringa still in my mouth <laughs> so it's kind of cool and you know i hope my family kids and grandkids will grow that variety for years and years and just be able to remember that story and uh so I'm not saying don't save the seeds from hybrids. I'm just saying you won't probably get the exact same thing. And I just thought it was crazy that I got four different types. So those hybrids were obviously crossed between, you know, a parent plants that were hybrids or that had, had I don't know how they, you know, but they in their genetics, um, somewhere back the line, they they had those four types of genes in them. And so it's like you know you say oh you know they should be exactly true to type well my my kid my mine and my wife's kids didn't come out exactly like me well zach's pretty i uh, maybe well i don't know maybe zach's pretty much like me <laughs> but no he looks a little bit different slightly and you know, so there's there's some differences but if i had another boy he would look different than zach and if i had another one he would look different than zach and tiffany doesn't not exactly like you know the the mother tree of deb and so um same thing you're not gonna if you plant a seed you're gonna get something a little bit different and um if you want an exact clone of that plant what you have to do is you have to propagate that through either cuttings you know stem cuttings or root cuttings some kind of a uh, rhizomes if it's that kind of plant different ways um so, but just some inches. I thought that's just an interesting fact there. And, uh, whoops, having a hard time keeping that one out. There we go. All right. Got those all covered. Got the label there. And I did a whole tray of those. So we got 15, 45. We got 48. Oh, man. I'm going to get two more because look at this. I got room for two more. That would make 50. I got to do it. I'm going to do it. So I'm um, pretty frugal, you may have guessed or may know. Um, so not only do we save egg cartons and recycle, upcycle them and reuse them, um, we use them again the next year. These ones I've already grown something in. So, All right, so let me water these and uh, I'll... Uh, get the next tray next one i got is anaheim pepper that's from Haas tools i'm gonna go ahead and do a uh a 15 pack of those you can see i'm peeling this back i don't know if i always like to be able to reseal the uh seeds packets if i can 
and there's 30 seeds in there so um i'll have 15 seeds left if that count is exact but i'm gonna go ahead and do 15 right here in one of these 15 packs and these are pretty good sized seeds see how big the whoops see how big those are pretty good must be a pretty good sized pepper save those for next year or if i kill these accidentally <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. Got the Thai Dragon. Put that there. Do a 15 pack of these. Now you can take and uh, make a dibble a little hole to put your seeds in and that's a good way to do it in fact maybe i'll do that on the next one show you what we're talking about there put those seeds back there got my... oh let's see we got some let's see if we got all the peppers done we got more peppers in here so let me get these out try to get all the peppers in together got a, a sweet banana pepper from M.I. Gardener. And these have already been opened, so these are last year's seeds. But there's plenty to do a 15-pack in there, so let me go ahead and do that. Get some seeds. And I don't know if you noticed, I, I don't know, you don't need to do this, but I always put, you see that M-I-G, that's M-I Gardener is what that's for. Uh, so I know where I got the seeds and in case I want to look up something about it, I can check like there, that one there. It's got Haas, Haas on it, Haas Tools, that's where those are from. So I just like to, um, now if it's something that I saved my own seeds, maybe I'll make a marking, maybe I won't generally i will know or remember oh i was gonna do a dibble hold on so always keep a dibbler with you got one there <laughs> i already did those let me so just make a little hole little hole little hole just poke those down in there drop those down oops sticking to it now these don't need to be covered deep, but all right. So let's just dibble a little hole. Might as well do them too. All right. Now I forget which ones I poked. I see one there. Let me go ahead. And... There we go. Let me get them over here and water them in. So I've already got three 1020 trays with seeds in them. I've only got two heat mats because that third one didn't really work out. I've got more peppers still. This is two weeks of doing peppers. <laughs> Oh, man, maybe I should cut off some of them. I don't know. Let me see what we got. So I got the Yellow Bell Sweet Pepper. Chocolate Beauty. Sweet Hybrid Carmen Pepper. Man. Put these in there. I got quite a few. I mean, I don't know if you can see. These are all peppers. Sark, bell pepper, more pepper, peppers, peppers, peppers. Man, well, I better do them. So what will happen is 
those ones that I planted last Saturday, which are quite a few of those are germinating, except for the ones that didn't get any heat. They're not germinating very good, but they'll heat, they'll germinate eventually. Um, you know, it's like what, 70 degrees in the house or whatever. And so eventually that heat will cause them to grow if they don't start rotting or whatever, you know, that's the thing you want them to germinate, germinate quickly. That's the advantage of a heat mat. Um, and I've heard people say, oh, stick them up on your refrigerator because of that heat. Well, I thought that, uh, so I went up there. Our refrigerator has no heat up there. I mean, it's literally, you know how metal is cold? It's cold. There's no heat up there. So for me, in our refrigerator, that didn't work. Um, trying to think of other places I can put. Um, I tried Deb's heating pad and that didn't work. That's the ones that are not germinating. I think maybe one seed germ is germinating so far. So anyhow, I'm gonna st I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the in the ground. They'll get starting on that process. I'll just try to have to make sure I don't let them dry out and don't let them get, you know, too wet. So that's a it's a fine line there. So let me get another tray. We'll go start. Okay, I just did some more. I did Chocolate Beauty, Sweet Bonnet Pepper, Ozark Giant, and Yellow Monster. So I got those in another flat. So we're going to go over and water those in. Okay, so I've got five flats done, planted with seeds. I got them stacked up over there, all watered in. And I want to do, I didn't get all my peppers done, but I think I'm going to check with Deb and see if that's enough. She have her go through those varieties that I have left and see if she really wants those. And if so, we'll get those planted too. Uh, but what I'm going to do next is I want to get at least a few tomato seeds planted. Um, so what I'm going to do is do them a little bit different. Instead of a 1020 flat, I'm going to do those in these... Um, these little aluminum trays that you get for at the dollar store for a dollar. Well, it used to be a dollar. It might be a dollar and a quarter now, or by the time you watch this, ten dollars. I don't know, dollar something. But any, you know, I used to love Dollar Tree because you could count on everything being a dollar. Now it's not. Anyhow, but anyhow, they come in a two pack for a dollar ish. And the bottom one, or I always just take and poke holes in one, and then set the bottom, set it in the other one as like a. Um, water catchment thing that way um so anyhow i've already got two two of them set up over here with soil and the catchment tray underneath so i'm gonna show you what i do there i've got um some amish paste tomatoes from the house tools and i'm gonna go ahead and get those opened up and this is i've done this method for man quite a few years uh, probably four or five years i would say doing it like this um and i have had really really good success so the way i do these well you could just sprinkle the seeds all over the whole tray if you wanted to do that but if you wanted to stay organized you can take like and make like a little row or two depending on you can get quite a few seeds in one of these I mean hundreds of seeds in these here now tomatoes you can you can plant those and i'm going to do that put that right there um you can plant them really close and then pull just tease the roots apart and do two rows well maybe maybe i'll get three rows you can see some of them are just clumping together you know i am going to do third row Nope, I'm doing four rows. No, I can, I'll just squeeze these ones in. Find a, find a spot where, because nice thing about tomatoes is you, if you especially, that's one of the important things about using seed starting mix is that stuff, it allows your roots to pull apart so easy. So when I put these together, and maybe I'll do a video where I show you how easy you can see lots of videos where they hold apart. I've probably done videos, but those will get growing good 
and then you can uh, you can literally leave them in this tray all the way till garden time and just pull them apart put them in the ground plant them deep you know and you're good to go so anyhow i'm going to go ahead and make another make another row before i cover up those rows that way i don't that way i know where i'm at cover them up And then I'm going to put my marker right there. Okay, so I said they come two in a pack. They come either two aluminum ones in a pack or, hold on a second, or one aluminum and one plastic, uh, clear plastic. And I always call these my humidity domes because you can take and put that over that and that will keep your moisture really good. And I'll probably actually do that on these. I have to cut that, cut my marker down just a little bit because it's a little tall. But I can do that. All right, so what do we got next? Let's see what we got next. Sun gold. Let's find the sun gold. Invincible. Well, let's just do invincible. I got it right here. So the invincible from Haas Tools. I think that's a hybrid um, from Haas. If Greg, if Greg talks about one uh, down there at house tools if he talks about one it's usually disease resistant and blight resistant all that stuff and so and he they're down a little bit further south well quite a bit further south south georgia and um so they have issues with the heat as well as what we do too so but well actually worse than what we do so anyhow the invincible i'm gonna grow that and you can see by the picture what kind of tomato i don't know i haven't grown this one yet but it's invincible <laughs> so the sun gold tomato I've, I've got several markers here because i'm going to grow a lot of those but today i'm only going to do one package not even one package do these two rows here so there's 50 seeds in a package this is from Haas tools and these are a hybrid and these are the best tomatoes in the world and these seeds are pretty tiny for because they're just cherry tomato seeds. And I'm going to space those out as well. Not that I really need to because they separate so easily. But. And 10 in that row. And I probably got 30 more seeds right there. So I'll stick those back in the package for later use probably next week or so get some more of those going maybe a couple weeks and go ahead and just fill cover those in all right so i think i'm going to stop there um i got another tray ready but i think i'll stop if deb wants me to plant any of those other peppers that's what i'll put them in so hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something hopefully i said something that struck a made you think a little bit and so anyhow thanks for hanging out with me and i will catch you on the side oh make sure you get your thumb brown i'm kind of brown stained a little bit my whole hands are so anyhow get your thumb brown get out there playing the dirt have some fun plant something propagate something god bless